have some little wart. <laughs> well, now you're in there. Come out of that wardrobe. Come out. I won't hurt you. <laughs> that suits you, that does. That's the picture they ought to see. Local commissar, club in hand, arguing for votes. You're quite right. I'm sorry. I don't need cudgels to back up my beliefs. I should be able to demolish any one of your arguments by sheer intellectualism. That'll be the day. You see, I have a built-in advantage over you. Whereas my beliefs is sincerely held the result of years of deep thought, observation and rationalisation. Your particular brand of squalid, nasty, anti-social opinion is a directly attributable to a basic desire to get right up my shonker. <laughs> yeah, get stuffed. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Oh, here's the public school coming at him again. Now, don't you try and tell me why I think the way I do. I've been a Tory ever since I left school. A tight, wasn't it? <laughs> I used to poke you up the chimneys, didn't I? No, they didn't. And I didn't leave school till I was ten. Oh, what beauty and joy. <laughs> the richest empire the world has ever seen, benevolently bestowing its largesse on the flower of its youth. Compulsory education to the age of ten. The mind boggles. <laughs> really, fun. I fail to understand why you chose this profession. I mean, surely, with the education like you've got behind you, it must have been a toss-up between the church, the army, or the foreign office. <laughs> oh, just think, you might have been our ambassador of the United Nations. <laughs> We'd have been at war with a lot of them by now. <laughs> yeah, you make me sick, the lot of you. You want it all on a plate, don't you? You don't want to work for it. You want the government to do it all for you. You'd have somebody to... Blow your nose for you if you could. Well, you ain't done so bad out of us. You would have had a set of choppers if it hadn't been for my party. <laughs> I'd still be cutting up your food for you. Oh, God, look at the stuff you've had out of us since 1948. And all for nothing. Blood, hair, bones, glasses, and a backside full of drugs. <laughs> you've been dead years ago if it hadn't been for us. That is the only thing I've got against the Labour Party. Really... Father, I fail to understand people like you. You ain't got two items to scrub together and it goes running around shouting hands off the stock exchange. Well, let me tell you this, mate. If you let any of that lot in on our council, you need your brains tested. Five minutes after they finish counting the votes, the rates will go up. You mark my words. Oh, really? If this is the level that the argument is going to descend to, I cannot be bothered. Yeah, you don't like hearing the truth, do you? I would be grateful in future if you would refrain from sticking these ludicrous slogans all over the house. It's not usual to see Vulcan conservative plastered all over the Labour Party committee rooms. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? You heard. I have uh, offered these premises as chairman of the local party for the committee rooms for the ward meeting to be held here tonight. The offer has been gratefully received, and there is a minute to this effect in the book. Well, you can tear it out again. I ain't going to be named on my business to a bunch of red scruff bags. Well, nobody cares what you think. It has all been arranged. Now, listen, Harold. I'm being serious now. No business firm should ever associate itself with any political party. It's very dangerous. You divide your custom right down the middle. You won't get any more conservative junk, and you'll be left with Labour junk. And everyone knows conservative junk's better quality than Labour junk. This Discrimination! <laughs> that is exactly what my party is trying to put an end to. We want to see the day come when all junk is equal. Well, no one can tell a man's background from what he chucks into his dustbin. In any case, Father, if you are worried about our public image, you could go a long way to restoring it yourself. How? Try a in yourself occasionally. <laughs> Wash yourself. Look at your neck. It is disgusting. I washed my neck this morning. Well, take your muffler off next time. <laughs> I'll just loosen it and move it up and down. Teddy wouldn't like that, would he? <laughs> he washes himself, down he? Now, come on, come on. I've got lots to do and very little time to do it in. Come on. I want this to be the best meeting we've ever had. The thing not to be missed. 
I've got political ambitions, Dad. I suddenly got the bug. Well, if they meet round here, they'll all have them. <laughs> we haven't got them back in kind, have we? I had a sulphur candle on the go all last week. We can't have them sort of things jumping around in a ward meeting. <laughs> it spelled political suicide for me. What are you talking about? I thought I made myself clear. Look, Dad, I can make my mark in politics. I know I can. See, the situation is wide open for a man of ideas and action. I'm going down and galvanised them. The agents noticed me. He was most impressed recently when I expounded my thoughts on Kashmir. Well, Gordon Bennett you just don't know something about that. We've been collecting it for years. I'm talking about a country, not a bleeding pullover. <laughs> That's your lot again. If the Labour government hadn't given India back, we'd never have had any of this problem. Oh, of course, you know, don't you? I mean, you have spoken to them, haven't you? I've spoken to a little bloke comes down here selling ties. He says it's the worst thing ever happened to him when we left. What's he got to do with it? He was born in Cardiff. <laughs> he eats anything to flog you a few ties. Ah, you know it all, don't you? Anything I say is rubbish. So Enoch Powell and Heath and Morgan and Hogg, they're all idiots as well, are they? Yeah, I didn't go as far as to say that. They are intelligent men. They are misguided. They've read the wrong books, that is all. Oh, well, that's them scrubbed out, isn't it? The minute the word goes round Westminster that Harold Steptoe's given them the thumbs down, they're out, they've had it. I bet old Heath's glad he plays the organ. He can always get a job in the Tower Ballroom Blackpool. <laughs> you are being sarcastic now, aren't you? Yeah, you make me sick, the lot here. Everybody's a burk except you, aren't they? I've been listening to you for years. Chat, 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 chat. Never done anything, just chat. Not at all. I have been biding my time. <laughs> Fame achieved before 40 is often a transitory thing. So look at General de Gaulle. He didn't push himself. <laughs> he just waited, as I have waited, sitting there in his uniform at Colombo des Desi Glazes. <laughs> till one day, the call come, and he was off. Well, there's a bit of a difference between General de Gaulle and Corporal Steptoe. Hitler was a corporal, so was Napoleon. Look, mate, corporals may get on abroad, but they don't get on in this country. And why not? Because we as riddled with class discrimination. I've been trying to fight against that all my life. Why should not a rack and bone man attain to the highest office in the land? Well, if this land goes on the way it's going, we'll all be rack and bone men. When are you going to make this bid for power? Ah, well, now, you can't rush it, can you? I mean, I've made a start. I'm chairman of the local party. The next step is to get myself adopted as prospective candidate for the council. You on the council? Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, now I know what you're after. Well, you'll have my vote. <laughs> you vote for me. You change your politics. Politics? Who's talking about politics? Don't try and kid me, mate. I'm your old man. I know what your game is. You want the council? All them demolition contracts, pulling down lampposts, tearing up tram tracks, and, 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 and lead on roofs, and there's no end to it. We'll make a fortune. And if you can work your way onto the Ways and Means Committee and the town planning, you may. Father, I think you misunderstand my motives. I couldn't be party to that sort of thing. All those kind of things is going to go out to tender. Oh, well, if you do that, mate, you'll get right up their noses. It's all you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. You get on the council, you're in. It's, it's, it's better than being a mason. <laughs> like they say about commercial television, it's a license to print money. Father, I can assure you that my motives for going into politics are to serve the community to the best of my ability without fear or favour. Oh, the childlike purity shining in his eyes. It's <laughs> touching, like little Joan of Arc. They'll have you, mate. They'll call you up. You mark my words, they'll be lodging the faggots under you on, in sight in three weeks. I wish I'll see. It'll depend on tonight. You see, it's not just an ordinary meeting. The agent is coming round. That's the first item on the agenda tonight, you see, selecting the nominee for the council. You see, Dad, this is more of a, a vetting committee. I, I'm just going to have to show them that I'm not just an ignorant rag and bone man. You see, they're more than aware of my dialectical capabilities. Tonight, they'll be clocking me for a bit of the old grace and elegance. 
very old savoir-faire. <laughs> it's very important. Uh, it's changed since my day. When I was a lad, a Labour MP only needed three things. A flat hat, a red tie, and a pair of hob boots. <laughs> Shane's dad. We, we realised years ago that we cannot walk into the conference chambers of the world wearing flat hats and hob boots. I mean, obviously, the Prime Minister of England cannot go into a Swiss bank with a backside hanging out of his trousers <laughs> and say, hey, lend us a couple of thousand million quid. Yeah. Dad, I'm not interested in getting on to the council just to make a few bob. That's only the first step. I've, I've got to get myself a reputation. I've got to get myself known. Now, I shall start by holding political soirees here. I, I, I shall invite all the MPs, the cabinet ministers, intellectuals. Within a year, this place will be like a salon where, where fine minds can gather to exchange ideas and be choice wise. Superb food. I'll turn this place into such a powerhouse of intellectual thought and political thinking that people like C.P. Snow, Bertrand Russell will be busting a gut to get in. <laughs> I, I see Mark Gatherings more like the pre-war Cliveden set. Lady Astor's place. <laughs> the weekend house parties. Ah, oh, yes. There'll be plenty for them to do here. Table tennis, rat hunting. <laughs> I can see you all now going for long tramps across the yard, deep in intellectual conversation and horse manure. <laughs> I don't know why I waste my time. You never understand me, will you? You've got no vision, have you? You can't see any further than the end of your nose. You are a little man! You've got no vision! Shouldn't think there's a father and son in the country with less rapport than us. I'm going to get washed and changed. You might as well make up your mind to the fact that before the evening is over, I shall be candidate for the Ravensbury Ward. More like a candidate for the psychiatric ward. <laughs> Copy him. <clears throat> it's just it's a perfectly good raincoat, that's all. I've just been out to get some wine. Now look, if you're gonna stay chark and you, you you can off it straight away. No, this is very important to me, Dad. Are you gonna behave yourself? I might do, and then again I might not. I'll see how the mood takes me. And I'm warning you. If I'm ejected out of my own house, I'll limp straight down to the local newspaper, which I don't have to tell you, seeing as how you blow your top every time you read it is dead Tory. I can see it now. Local Labour candidate throws father out on street. Oh, Read all about it. You can't stay, but don't interfere. Understand? Please. Oh, there we are. Oh, please, Dad, don't, don't mess it up for me. Good evening, comrade. Good evening, comrade. Do come straight in. Thank you. Comrade. Good evening, comrade. 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 <laughs> good evening, Mr. Stoutlake. It's very good of you to spare time to come to our little meeting. I, I know how busy you agencies. Well, it's a very busy time campaigning, but it's very important we should decide on the right candidate. Oh, quite, quite. I do so agree. Would you care to step inside? Yeah. Oh, this is my father. This is Mr. Stonelake, the agent. What for? Raincoat? <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Steptoe? This is indeed a pleasure. No, I, I think I should mention my father does not share our beliefs. Oh, well, everybody to his own point of view, eh? Wouldn't do for us all to think alike, eh? <laughs> I, may not, I may not agree with what you say, but will defend with my life your right to say it, eh? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I respect everybody's point of view. Uh, why, some of my best friends are Tories. Uh, uh, 
Yes, well, shall we begin? Oh, yes, indeed. I think we ought to get started. Oh, yes, of course. Please do sit down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is your uh, father staying? Uh, he won't go out. Oh, that's rather inconvenient. Isn't there another room we can go to? Uh, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. It's, it's all we got, you know, two up, one down. Oh, dear. Most awkward. I feel you should have told us, Mr. Steptoe. I'm very sorry about this, but he really won't interfere. He's not really politically minded. I mean, he's not actually a member of the Conservative Party. He, so the last time he voted was for Baldwin. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. You just carry on. Conduct the meeting as you would normally. I'll just sit here and observe, so to speak. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Comrades, I declare the meeting open. Well, the first uh, item on the agenda is the reading of the minutes of the last meeting. Do you have the minute book, Miss Furbisher? Oh, yes, of course, comrades. <laughs> uh, minutes of the meeting of the Ravensbury Ward Committee on Thursday the 17th of September, held at number 32, Old Drum Lane. Those present, Harold Steptow, Chairman, Miss Karen Frobisher, Treasurer, and uh, Mr Arthur Biggs. But was that all? Just three? Yes. Oh, well, you, you see, uh, we usually has more, but there was that tummy trouble going round at the time, if you remember. And then again... Queen's Park Rangers was the town. Queen's Park Rangers had nothing to do with it! Will you kindly keep quiet? Well, to be perfectly frank, this is not a very active ward at the best of times. But it is one of my aims as chairman to reverse this trend and make this a truly dynamic ward. If anyone yeah, yeah. can do it, I'm sure our chairman, Harold, I mean, comrade Steptoe can. Yes, yes, I quite yes. agree. All three of them, you agree? Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I, I see. Carry on. <laughs> uh, item one, still. The minutes of the previous meeting was read and confirmed as a true record and duly signed. So the item two is uh, resolution. Revolution? Resolution! Oh, I thought you were getting the bombs out. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to read a book or watch television or something? No, no, I'm all right. It's much funnier here. You carry on. <laughs> <clears throat> resolutions. Uh, Mr. Harold Steptoe put forward the following resolution. The Ravensbury Ward Labour Party of the Shepherd's Bush constituency deplores the current situation existing in South Vietnam and calls upon the United States government, the South and North Vietnamese governments and the Viet Cong to cease hostilities immediately. To withdraw all foreign troops from South Vietnamese soil and to hold free elections under the supervision of the United Nations as agreed in the Geneva Convention of 1954. <laughs> Copies of the resolution was sent to Harold Wilson in London, President Johnson in Washington, Mr. Kozygin in Moscow, Ho Chi Minh in Hanoi, Ma Ho Tung in Peking, and Yu Fan at the United Nations. As yet, we have not received any replies. <laughs> the uh, typing of the resolution was undertaken by Miss Frobisher during her lunch hour at her place of employment, uh, Brodie's betting shop in the high school. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Uh, the chair recognises Mr. Stonelake from the floor. Thank you. As the official representative of the Labour Party executive at this meeting, I feel bound to say that I feel you acted rather hastily in sending this resolution to the world leaders. Official party policy on South Vietnam is quite clear, and any independent declaration such as this can only serve to embarrass Her Majesty's government. Well, I, I feel I should point out that the resolution clearly reflected the mood of the meeting. All three of you? <laughs> yes. I see. Carry on. 
Item number three, the report of the recent canvassing in the area. I call upon the party treasurer, Miss Bronley. Mr. Chairman, I am pleased to inform the meeting that the canvas returns have been most encouraging. In Khartoum Avenue alone, there has been a 28% swing to labour since the last decade. Oh, 28% swing? Yes. Well, well, if that trend is continued over the next election, we should get in by over 680 seats. Oh, 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 Very yes. remarkable. There are only 630 seats to be contested. Oh, yes. Carry on. <laughs> oh, I, I, I feel we must all agree that uh, these results from the ward do show the effectiveness of our campaign in the ward. I mean, after all, 28% swing. Yes, uh, as a matter of interest, I have the uh, Conservative canvas figures here. Here we are. Cartoon Avenue. A 27% swing to the Conservatives, and the Liberals report a 295 swing to them. Well, that's impossible! No, these figures is correct. I went round canvassing myself. What night did you go round? Tuesday. Oh, there you are then, Riviera Police. <laughs> well, say yes to anyone when that's on to get rid of them. That's not true! I'm afraid your father is quite right. Experience will teach you not to base everything on your canvas returns. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, item four on the agenda. The adoption of the candidate for the forthcoming council elections. I uh, call upon you for nominations. I nominate our chairman, Harold Steptoe. I don't think we could choose a better man. His charm, his personality, his integrity, his keenness and ability are beyond question. Get in there, Harold, it's your birthday. <laughs> Do you mind? I nominate Dr. Jeremy Stewart. Well, co comrades, I, I, I'm very grateful for your confidence in me. Uh, and of course, I'm very happy to accept the nominee. Uh, pardon? I nominate Dr. Jeremy Stewart. Who's he? He is the official constituency choice. I've never heard of him. Well, you will do, because we're counting on you all to work hard to get him elected. I, I, I don't understand. I mean, I was given to understand that my adoption was only a matter of formality. Well, I've been working on my campaign. I am sorry, Mr. Steptoe. The constituency party has reluctantly decided not to endorse your candidature. Why not? Yes, why not? Harold's the ideal candidate for this ward. He's lived here all his life. He knows everybody. Absolutely. He's part of it. Exactly. Yeah, that, that is the trouble. How can I put this? Uh, Central Office feel that... Uh, well, let me put it this way. The population movement in the area indicates a growing middle-class electorate are moving into the Ravensbury Ward. And we feel that the cloth cap image has tended to work against us in such areas. It is essential that our candidate should have, shall we say, a wider appeal than perhaps that which Mr. Steptoe might project. How dare you call my son a scruff bag? <laughs> well, no, I didn't mean to infer. He's not good enough for you. You don't want a rag and bone man. I didn't say that. Please, Father. You stay out of this. I'm not going to have a trophy nose red poof coming into me house. How dare you? My only interest is in winning this seat for the Labour Party. We consider that Dr. Stewart embodies everything we wish to project. He's young, university education, respectable practice, a perfect image. This is a very vital seat and we cannot feel certain of winning it with Mr. Steptoe. Marginal seat, could swing either way. I know which way your seat will swing when I put me boot up it. <laughs> this is Labour Party business and I'd be very much obliged if you creep out. And this is my house and I'd be very much obliged if you get out. I resign. Yes, I resign. I think Sorry. Listen to me, please. For the sake of party unity, I will withdraw my name and I will offer my full support to Dr. Stewart. 
Well, I will do my best to get him elected. Harold Steptoe, the noblest rag and bone man of them all. <laughs> Party won't forget this, comrade. Thank you. Well, if there is now I have a business, I'll declare the meeting closed. Anybody care for a condensed milk sandwich? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I have another meeting myself. Uh, an agent's work is never done, eh? <laughs> Anyone care for a lift? Oh, no, thank no, you. No. Good night, Mr. Stepped I am. So to say. Good night. Come on. Good night, Mr. Stepped Come Good night. Good night, come I thought you were magnificent, Harold. That was a tremendous thing you did in there. Thank you. Cameron. What price party politics now? What do you mean? <laughs> you soon got the old Evo, didn't you? So much for we're all equal. Only some are more equal than others. Disillusioned, are you? No, no, of course not. I mean, it was a majority decision from head office. We must abide by it. Yeah, abide by it. Oh, my... you don't understand, do you? It's not just a party tag, it's more a, a way of life. Yeah, what a oh, way you're of politically li naive, you Me? are. Me? How about you? He was against the bomb when Gates was in, now he's all for it. We cannot walk naked into the conference chambers of the world. Well, why did he cancel the TSR too? Now, Macmillan cancelled it before we did, then he brought it back again. Two years out of date. Yeah, <laughs> <and> <laughs> Hey, what about the blue streak then? What about the blue streak? Well, what about it? Well, what about it? <laughs> <laughs>